Let us see how to enable Spark Web UI for Glue jobs. Out of the box, Glue does not provide a web UI to visualize the Spark event log. To enable the web UI, we have to set the property at the Glue job level to output the Spark event log into an S3 bucket. Once we configure that property, a Glue job will write all of the Spark events into the S3 path what we have specified. As a next step, we need to have a Spark history server, uh, which is going to make use of the Spark event log, what is available in this S3 folder, and visualize it for us. So having a Spark web UI is really useful to understand the job performance and for the debugging purposes. So let us get into a demo and see how this is done. So as a first step, uh, let us go ahead and create a sample glue job. Navigating to the uh, glue, go to ETL job. Let's say we want to create the uh, job visually. Hit create. So let us configure our source and target. So this is going to be really a simple job. Uh, we will be reading from a, a CSV file, which is available in an S3 bucket. And without doing much of a transformation, write that into another S3. Right, let's go ahead and choose the S3 location. Sales.txt is our input file. Let's say infer schema. So our data contains the comma separated file and we do have a header, right? So first line of the source file con contains column header option is check. That's all about the uh, source config. Uh, let us move on to the target config. Uh, we want this to be output in the CSV format again and leave the compression type as none and where we want to write our output. Go to the bucket and select our output directly. And then let's hit save. Okay, let's go to job details and then fill in the pressure detail. I'm naming it as a glue ETL web UI demo. Can give a short des description um, an IAM role which is needed to run this glue job which essentially need to have access to the S3 bucket to read and write. So I have the role already created glue S3 role I'm just going to choose that and leave the glue version default glue 3.0 uh, language let's go with python and worker type we can go with geonax then request a number of workers and just for a demo we are not really going to process any real data we can change this to uh, two and i'm leaving rest of the options as default but job timeout minutes probably i'll change it to five minutes in advanced properties we have to give the script file name i'm going to name that as same the job name Go ahead and do it. And the script path, we can choose the um, the folder which is available in our bucket instead of leaving it as a default. So I have a script folder here. I'm selecting it. And let's enable the Spark UI checkbox. Right, this is the one which enables the Spark job to write the Spark event log into the S3 path we are going to specify. Right, uh, the Spark UI log path, this is important. This is the one going to be used by the Spark history server. Let's browse. Go to the S3 bucket and select Spark UI web log. That's a folder where we want to store the event log. In temporary path, I can give a custom folder here. We have workspace, choose. 
think rest of the options we can leave it empty let's hit save okay look all good uh, we'll go to the script and do a small modification so uh since this is very uh, simple job probably it would take um, a minute or so to complete uh, but you know the spark ui logs are returned to s3 bucket every 30 seconds if uh, if the runtime of the job is really um less right let's say one or two minutes probably we may not get the enough log information to visualize it so just to avoid that situation what i'm going to do i'll add a sleep of maybe 60 seconds so that we will get all the log returned to s3 bucket uh, so that we can visualize it in the ui for that let me say edit script to so confirm it import time and let add a sleep just before the job commit i'm adding sleep as 60 seconds let's save it okay all look good we will go ahead and run it now successfully started let's navigate to the runs and see what's happening okay it's running probably it's going to take um you know two to three minutes to complete we'll pause the video now we'll continue once it's done okay the job has been completed so let us navigate to the s3 path what we have selected as a folder to store the logs and see whether we have a log created okay uh, under spark ui logs we should have the log files yes we do okay so next step uh, let us go ahead and see how to spin up the power history server using the cloud formation so in the in the aws page um, you know under the monitoring park job section uh, we have an details available on how to spin up this for 50 server i'm on this page i'm just going to you know click on the respective cloud formation complete i'm on northern virginia region for uh, uh, new 3.2 i'll go with this option okay So this page we can leave everything as default no need to change anything click next the stack name spark ui glue let's say um demo and parameters ip address range um so we can't leave this empty uh, so i'm just going to make uh, o.o.o.o .o. but in real world you may not just open this for entire world probably you will restrict it with the uh, you know vpc or your uh, you know organization cider range but for now i'm um, just opening it to the world history server port i'll leave it as default and this event plug directory so this is the path where we have our park event plug stored by our glue job so let's go ahead and grab that path So just note uh, so we'll have to leave this with s3a uh, not s3 colon double slash right we just put the path over here and key store path we don't need to but it is expecting the key store password just put some you know a random password we don't need it and so just type something so that it will not get stopped EC2 instance config by default it says t3 small maybe we can go with t3 micro as well uh, to be on the free tire um, and let's select the vpc i'm selecting the default vpc 
and default subnet and click next the iam role so in case uh, the the iam user you have used to log in has the um, uh, enough privileges right to spin up ec2 instance and create iam roles and things like that you don't need to choose it but if your iam user does not have enough rights we need to provide a role which has enough rights to uh, you know do the activities through cloud formation for now i have an admin access so i'm not giving any specific iam role here for this stack right and stack failure options i'm leaving it as a default and advanced options i'm not changing any all default for me right hit next so this is a review page let's take a quick look all seems fine we just acknowledge that you know this cloud formation may create some iam resources and then submit it okay the cloud formation stack create in progress uh, probably it will take um, four to five minutes to uh, get all of the resources provisioned i'm going to pause the video now we'll come back once it's done okay uh, now the stack formation has been completed uh, which means uh, this has really uh, created an uh, ec2 instance and deployed the uh, you know history server on top of that and configured it to use um, so now let us navigate over to the ec2 and see whether we have one running instance Yeah, we do have one instance uh, running. It's in the running state and status check is initializing. Probably it's going to take a couple of minutes uh, to complete the status check, but I think that's not a problem for us. Let's go ahead and grab the URL from the uh, cloud formation stack output and see whether we are able to open the Spark Web UI. Okay, we are in the cloud formation stack and go to output. And there are two URLs. One is the private URL and the public URL. And I'm going to grab the public URL and see whether we have access. Yes. Copy link address and put it in the new window. Okay, so since we have not configured the SSL certificate, um, there is a security warning. Uh, we'll go ahead and continue. Okay, uh, there is no new log found, right? I think whatever we had that was in running state, I hope. Let's go ahead and, you know, uh, run the glue job once again. The same glue job, we will be just giving one more run. Okay, this is in the succeeded state. Let's go ahead and, and, and say run. Okay, just started. Yeah, probably it will take uh, two minutes, little over two minutes. I'm going to pause the video now. I will come back once the glue job is done. Okay, the glue job has been completed. And now let's navigate to the Spark Web UI and see if this log is showing up there. Hit refresh. Yeah, we have got that um, new log instance over here, right? Just click on the app ID. You'll be able to see all the um, details, right? So you can see the uh, job details, and the duration, and the number of stages it had. Uh, and then you can navigate to stages and see how long each of the stage took and, and things like that. Typically, whatever the uh, functionalities, right, or the features, uh, we would get through the um, uh, Apache Spark Web UI, all of them we can use it for the glue job as well. Hope this in information was useful. Uh, we will meet you with 
another interesting video.